In this video, I'm going to show you editing behavior in Reaper. Now, by editing behavior, what I'm talking about is the preferences for editing behavior in Reaper. So let's go to the preferences. Go up here to the options menu and go down here and choose preferences, which opens up this dialog. And we'll scroll down right here to editing behavior. So in this video, we're going to go over everything in this tab. Now, the first option up here is to move the edit cursor to the start of the time selection on time selection change. And as you can see, it's off by default. So if we create a time selection like this, notice our edit cursor stays over here. So if the edit cursor is over here and we create a time selection in the ruler or in the space between our items, just above the track, it doesn't change where the edit cursor starts, which is useful if you want to create edits but don't want to change playback each time. So I can put my edit cursor at the beginning for playback, make some edits, and it's still going to play back from that same point, which is great for editing, but always playing back from the same position. But if you want to change that, we could change it right here. Just turn it on, hit OK. And now if I create a time selection, it puts the edit cursor right there. Stare too long. And here, if I create it right here in the ruler or in the space above the track, it creates a time selection, but also moves the edit cursor. So it's going to affect playback, which is really useful if you're creating loops. If you want to loop from bar three to bar five, it's going to start playback right from the beginning. Otherwise, with this option off, we do the same thing. We have to move our edit cursor or play cursor to play from that point, and then it'll loop afterwards. So if you want the edit cursor to move automatically, just change it here. But again, it's off by default. And the next option is on by default, which is going to move the edit cursor when pasting or inserting media. So if we select an area, let's use razor editing like this and copy it. Let's go to the end over here and paste it. And it moves the edit cursor to the end of that paste, which is really useful if you want to loop when you paste. So you can just hit paste many times and it loops the item section we pasted. But this also moves the edit cursor. And in some situations, we don't want that. Let's say we want to copy this whole item. You could select it, copy it, and then paste it over here. It moves our edit cursor to the end. So we're no longer at the beginning of our paste. So if you want that different behavior, we could turn this option off. And now I can select this item, copy it, and paste it over here. And it keeps the edit cursor at the beginning of that paste, which for some workflows makes more sense, as I'm not pasting this multiple times to loop it. But again, this option is on by default. So our cursor is going to move to the end of the pasted piece each time. More useful for looping. Now this next option is going to move the edit cursor to the end of recorded items on record stop. And as you can see, it's off by default. So if I record some audio over here, and if I hit stop, it puts the cursor back at the beginning, which is useful for listening back based on where we started to record. But it's less useful for recording dialogue or audiobooks or anything where you're working through the project. So for that workflow, you might want to turn this option on. Move edit cursor to end of recorded items on record stop. So with that on, we can go over here and start recording. Record our items until we're happy. Hit stop. And it puts our cursor at the end. So ready to record through our project starting from where we left off. Record again. We're working through our project. Hit stop, and it stops right there. So it's kind of like pausing 
along the way. Keep recording, hit stop, and keep working through our project. But again, this option is off by default. So we record our audio or MIDI. It's going to put the edit cursor back at the beginning, like this, which is more useful for music, but less useful for recording dialogue or anything where we're working through our project from beginning to end. Next over here, we have the option to link loop points to time selection. And as you can see, it's on by default, and it also shows up in the Options menu. If we go up here to Options, we can go down here and see Loop Points Link to Time Selection is on. And again, it's on by default. So what that means is if we create a time selection like this, that's going to loop this section. Let's make a small one right here. Hit Play. Run a few miles down a desert road. Run a few miles. It loops that section. But what's linked in this option is our time selection too. So if I want to create a time selection over here, like this, it moves the loop points as well. So we lost the looping over here. Every time we create in the ruler or just below it, above the tracks, a new time selection because they're linked. But if we want to separate them, we can turn this option or preference off. And now we can create a loop point by going up here to the ruler. Notice we only see the looping up here, not down here, because it's not creating a time selection. So it's still gonna loop if we play it. Run a few miles down a desert road. Run a few miles. But now we can create time selections just by dragging below the ruler and above our tracks, which is called the arrange view, like right here. This is now a time selection, which is separate from our loop points over here. So you can create one like this, or down here, or down here, and change our loop points up here by dragging in the ruler. So they're completely separate, and changing one doesn't change the other. But by default, this is turned on, so they're linked together. So creating a loop point also creates a time selection, or deletes any time selection we had. If we had one here, and we create one here, it deletes or removes the old one and creates a time selection and loop points at the same time. But if you want it separate, just turn it off. And now we can create loop points and still edit over here without affecting our loop points over here. But again, they're linked by default. Now at any point, we can clear our loop points or our time selection just by hitting the escape key. So if we create one, hit escape, it clears our time selection and our loop points. But we could also do it if we choose the option right here, clear loop points on click in ruler. This is off by default, but if we turn it on, we can create loop points and time selections and just click in the ruler to clear both of them. But this is off by default. So if we do that, and click over here, it doesn't clear our loop points or our selection. We can do the same thing over here by clicking in the Arrange view. Again, it's off by default, but if we turn it on and create a time selection and loop points, we can now click in the Arrange view, which is the area above our tracks, either here or here, and that's going to clear our loop points and our time selection. We could still click in the ruler. Could we turn that option off? We leave them both on. And now we can click either here or up here to clear them. We'll just choose the one you prefer. We'll leave them both off and just clear it with the escape key. And that clears our loop points and the time selection. And again, these are both off by default. So that's pretty much it. That's the editing behavior in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.
Bingo, boys, let's go. Mm -hmm.